There's tremendous joy in seeing a river full of fish. And to feel like you've had some small part in bringing this stream back to life, it's just astonishing. Well, essentially the stream by about the mid-19th century had been completely built out as far as hydropower potential. They use it to run line shafts like the mill building I'm currently sitting in now, which was the largest woolen mill in New England at the time. Well, after the, the development of those dams, there was no provision for fish passage, so the fish just couldn't make it back to their spawning habitat. And we're not just talking about river herring, there's multiple other species that would come up here to spawn as well, because it had been essentially cut off uh, since 1783. Fort Halifax Dam had been removed, that's the lowest one on the Sebastocook, uh, in 2008. And in 2009, strangely enough, uh, or not so strangely, knowing the species, uh, river herring showed up below Box Mill, which is literally feet away from where we're currently talking. Uh, and not just a few, but several tens of thousands showed up below Box Mill because they could smell China Lake and it smelled good and they wanted to get up there. And there's a lot of potential here at 4,000 acres. China Lake is a huge water body for the Mid-Main Basin. This little stream here is about seven and a half, eight miles long from China Lake down to the Sebastocook River. And when we started this project, there were six dams on it. And the idea was maybe sort of simple. Let a run of alewives make their way back into China Lake. The only thing stopping them, six old dams that really no longer served a purpose, but had no fish passage. Six dams to restore what we expect will be a run of nearly a million adult alewives returning annually from the ocean. I'm not aware of any project this complex that has been successfully completed. River herring is a, is a collective term that we use to describe both blueback herring and, and alewives. Essentially, they're anadromous species. They have to spawn in fresh water, but they're principally a marine species, so they grow up to be big fish in the ocean, and then they have to come to fresh water to spawn. They're a keystone species. And we know, based on historical landings, that we've managed to reduce this highly prolific keystone species about 96 percent uh, through the, you know, the classic three, overfishing, pollution, and loss of habitat. We can speculate with some level of accuracy how many different species were impacted by the loss of these runs of fish. Birds of prey like bald eagles, uh, osprey, the river otter, and raccoons, and minks, and great blue herons, and cod, and haddock, and whales, and and uh, you know, sharks and tunas, seals. Um, it goes on and on and on. It's, you know, sometimes people will say, oh, okay, you're restoring a bait fish. All right, alewives are not really charismatic, but it's life. It's the base of the food chain. If you want more life, you have to have more food. I always figured with enough persistence, the project would come together one way or another and we'd get it done. But it was six sites with six owners and a lot of different moving parts. Uh, the, the, each one of them was a dam in some state of disrepair. So in each case we had to come to some agreement with the property owner, with the dam owner, as to what we would do on their site. So this is the Massey Sawmill site. There was a dam here and that dam held back a six acre pond. And of course, like all dams, there was no way the fish could get up past it into China Lake. The big difference between 
building a fishway and removing a dam. Building a fishway is about six times the cost of removing a dam. But more importantly, building a fishway only solves one problem. The fishway is only designed for certain species, specifically alewives and blueback herring. So they don't work especially well for other species. And they only operate during that blueback and, ale and alewife run, uh, which is April, May, June. And then the rest of the time, they're typically closed and not operational at all. So the rest of the time, they're of no use to the other native species like suckers and brook trout. And the other point is that um, this riparian buffer habitat is really important habitat on any stream. And because we've taken out the dam here, it gives us an opportunity to restore that. And that benefits many different species of birds and uh, insects and everything else. We did experience a fair amount of skepticism when we had meetings and were trying to talk to people about what we wanted to do. Some people didn't believe it. Some people were worried that the stream was going to completely dry up. So we had to have a lot of, um, we spent a lot of time, you know, talking to each other and trying to understand a good path forward. And it was very exciting to find that we could talk about why we were doing this and people would be drawn in by the idea of restoring life, of bringing back an ecosystem that had been bludgeoned generations ago. The town of Bassler is a rural community. It's still a small hometown feel, have a great school, good educational program, and a lot to offer. It's a nice community. So we use the Weber Pond project as an example and to help us realize what the potential was. So in 2008 was when we were allowed to do a, the first harvest and it's been very successful ever since. So over time, uh, we've taken in, let's see, for the alewife harvest, since uh, 2008, we've taken in 181,994. So we've set it aside into a reserve so that the town can use that money to benefit other projects. A lot of right now what we're focusing on is using that revenue toward uh, the alewife run to get into China Lake. Well, I'm Ray Breton. I um, was born in Waterville, Maine, um, and moved in Bassboro in 1967. As got older, you know, working in town and, and then going on my own business, um, contractor, and buying property. This mill is one of them. And with the mill came the dams. You know, they were built in 1850. Um, and, you know, probably Nate and, and and Matt from Main Rivers, and um, they came to me talking about um, doing fishways. Box Mill Dam is the one that's it's here near the mill, and that one I was a little more fussy about what I wanted to see. I had to blend in with the surrounds um, because of all the wedding pictures and graduation pictures um, and things like that. Um, the backdrop of that cascade is beautiful, and I did not want to lose that, so. The one by the mill is a, probably one of the prettiest fishways you'll ever see, you know. As of May 2022, the project is exactly where we would want it to be. There's a lot of fish down there right now. We're coming right into the peak of it. And I had predicted, you know, somewhere between 180,000 and a quarter million. Um, it would not surprise me to exceed 400,000 this year alone. With the success of this project, those fish that are coming back now will probably establish a commercial fishery on them that will run about four days a week, which will provide enough escapement to make sure that the population stays at about a million fish per year per year. And that will go to be both food for humans and also for lobster bait. It's kind of a miracle to see fish coming back. It's been really fun knowing that fifth and sixth graders from the local schools have been actively engaged over years in learning about the restoration, understanding not just the fish, 
but the stream banks and the plants and the connection between China Lake and the Gulf of Maine and helping them make connections with places they know. And, you know, there's something mysterious about migration. It really, it's really appealing to people. And when these creatures leave the lake and head out down the, to the Kennebec and into the ocean, we kind of know where they go, but not entirely. There's something really magical about that. And I think that's something that appeals to kids and adults. I just feel a pleasure at seeing the, the system starting to recover. So I hope that this project and our work can serve as an inspiration for other communities to think about it, to see what we've done, and to look at their own rivers and streams and think about how they can be healthier. Because it's really good news. We're talking about something important and difficult that's been done, that's been achieved, that will have tremendous ecological benefits. And it happened because of a lot of supporters, a lot of friends, and, and a vision, and a certain level of persistence. You know, it really, it's a rewilding of a stream that had been essentially annihilated by the Industrial Revolution. It's, it's really remarkable. Because eventually, you know, guys like Matt and, and Ray and you and me will be gone. Those fish will still be here. And they'll keep being here as long as folks in front of us take care of them.